So my TS-80 uh, finally bit the big one the other night, and I started looking at it, just gave up, just bought another one. The, the board is uh, pretty chewed up from the original fire that it had from when it burned itself out, and um, I had to solder another plug on it. That video is on the electronics channel, or what is it, the uh, electronicals channel. Um, part of a review. So I'm gonna give it one more chance. I'm hoping that it was just a, uh, maybe a bad batch that I got. But I got the new one, which is the TS-80P. And it's all back, it should be backwards compatible with the previous tips. And by the way, yeah, I'm wearing gloves again because I injured my hand and since the camera's kind of zoomed in, I just figured it'd be better just to cover it up for the time being. Um, so what you get in the box is obviously the iron the TS-80P iron, and uh, you get a tip with it. Fortunately, they send conical tips. Couldn't find anything for a wedge, but that's okay. You know, we'll make it work. And I'm actually, for this, I'm gonna use my old tip, which is from the uh, original TS-80 that I bought. I might as well use this one up before I use the, uh, the new one. I don't know if this one, oh no, it does. TSBO2, and what's this one say? TSBO2, so they should be the same tip. But I'm gonna use the uh, old one first. You got the TS80P itself, and the difference is the old one had a piece that would screw off. This doesn't, this actually has a nice piece that you can use that to take the tip out. I don't really think it was needed because I, I never had a problem removing the tip on the other one because this part here never actually got very hot to begin with. So, uh, but you know, hey, that's cool. We'll put that there. You also get in the box a, uh, a holder with a little sponge and that sponge looks really thin. So it should add a little bit of water to it. It should kind of Is it coming to life? I'm not going to use this. I have um, my other soldering stand here, but no, it's not getting fluffy. Just kind of hoping it would kind of expand a little more than that, but maybe it will in time. So you get the iron, the tip, and you get another one of these really nice, these really nice uh, cables. I didn't have luck with the last one. It actually wound up going bad over time, and I I've, I've have read on forums uh, people having similar problems. Now this is USB C to USB C, it seems, so uh, there is no uh, USB A header or USB A, and you get a power adapter with USB C on the back of it. So I have um, since I'm going to be using a battery. I'm going to use the old USB-C cable that I used to have for this. I actually have a bunch of them, but I'll, let me go get that. And this is the cord the other one came with, and I'm going to, you know, you can use just regular USB-C cables for it. Uh, this is nice because it's so flexible. And again, I'm going to use this one because uh, that's what this battery supports. And you also get an Allen key, which is to connect the ground strap, which I'm not going to worry about right now. All right, so let's fire this thing up see what it does. I want to say version 1.3. All right, and this is the original, or this is the stock firmware. So if I push to the left, it should just engage it. It's heating up. What's interesting though is, I mean, uh, you have to hold it a little bit and then you can adjust it. All right, let's go into some of the settings. So first we got, assuming that's wake temp, standby temperature. So after it's been sitting for a little bit, it cools down. Sleep time, meaning how long it's going to take before it goes to cool down. Uh, power. Let's go back to that. I guess it's 18 watts. I'm 
assuming that's 18 watts. The thing I don't like about this firm, okay, there it goes. I am right-handed. But what I want to do now is try the alternate firmware. I uh, This is very similar to the, the firmware that came with the original one, or at least the interface is, and I was never really a big fan of it. I liked the uh, iron, the iron, I believe it was iron OS that I put on, uh, I put on the other one, but I'm not, I don't remember, it's been so long now. And that worked out really well. So I guess the first thing I need to do is plug this into a computer. So to update the firmware or to change the firmware on these, you push, if it's anything like the TS-80, um, you just push the button that's closest to this tip, plug it into the computer, and you hold that down and it'll say DFU whatever version. So I'm gonna grab the hex file TS80PEN. I'm going to copy that and paste it into the USB drive that just showed up. It's going to disconnect and reconnect. And when it does, you'll see your file, the extension has been changed to RDY. If it changes to anything else, then you had a problem, you gotta start over again. Uh, it'll say ERR if there was an error. You wanna keep an, a copy, a good copy of the original firmware on hand just in case there are any problems. I believe if it says ERR, um, it'll just trash that file and continue on with the existing firmware, but don't take, you know, don't take my word for it. Uh, the, you know, I don't know what they've changed on here. I know it was like that on the previous one. So when that's done, you unplug it from the computer, plug it back into your power supply, It says settings were reset. And there's that. So now I believe. Soldering settings, sleep modes, user interface. I believe you can. And I got two cats playing behind me, so. Advanced options, I believe it is. Detailed idle screen detailed solder screen. All right, so that's the soldering screen. And you can see plenty of information there, how much power it's pulling, and then you see it counting down right there. That is, uh, when you shake it, it goes back up to 50. So when this sits you know, in its holder and nobody's touching it, that starts to count down. You can change that within the settings to make it longer or shorter if you'd like. And then you got your temperature down there. You can change your temperature. What I wonder what happens when it goes to idle. So I want to see that. I want to see what the screen looks like when it goes to idle. So I'm going to see what the, happens when the when it goes to idle. What the screen looks like. And it says sleeping once it once it goes into sleep mode. I was gonna turn on the detailed information under the sleep mode, but uh, that's okay, I'll leave it like that. It actually, you know, it's no different. It doesn't feel any different than the um, than the than the previous model, which this is just a hopped up version of it. And the reason I like this over the T100 is I've never actually used the T100, but everything I've seen, everybody complains about the, the you know, the large or the long tip. And I've had soldering irons that have that exact problem, like, you know, ones that you plug in that had a very large, you know, long tip on it, and it was very hard to be, you know, very precise as with when you're soldering. I don't even want to go back there. A lot of people swear by them, and that's great, and I'm sure it's a wonderful iron. I just, if they fix that, I would consider it. The other thing I like about this is that I can run this off of USB. And um, let's see, actually, out of curiosity, now that I swapped to different firmware, can I run this thing off of a just a regular five volt. And yes, I can. There you go. So it's plugged just into a regular five volt charger. And um, yeah, you see it's struggling just to heat up to, I think it's set to 333 or something like that. It's not gonna make it. It's pulling out 4.8 volts at about four watts. 
it's never going to reach it. But it's nice to know that it's there in a, if you're absolutely in a bind. So the low voltage warnings will be a thing of the past with Iron OS. However, you do need to keep an eye on it because if it doesn't negotiate properly with the, with the power bank and it starts pulling five volts, which is what my other iron was doing a lot, you might wonder why is it not heating up. So you got to keep an eye on uh, when you tell it you know what the voltage is. Now this bank only puts out about nine volts. Um, I'm not sure what these are, actual wattages on it, but um, the one that you plug into the wall will be better than that. So I found an extension cord, kind of a crappy one I use just for like lamps and quick things. And uh, so let's plug this thing in and see how well it does on the provided one. So I think it's set at 12 volts, so we'll go. And that heats up nice and quickly. So that's no no drama. It just works. So I'm happy with that. So that's the uh, the new Miniware TS80P. Again, this isn't a very thorough video. I just uh, I got it. I figured I'd make a quick video about it. And um, we'll see how this goes. Yep. Uh, maximum 12 volts, 30 watts. Uh, we'll see what happens. I will keep you updated. Let you know any issues that I run into.